<laughs> Had a bit of extra flavour on it this week. <laughs> Good no morning, Zompak. I'm Bex and I'm stuck in a rapidly decaying street in Manchester. And that was Mark. And he's living the high life in a demon-run compound in London. Yes. Uh, we are coming to you from the end of the world. The end of the world hasn't been too bad, really, has it, Bex? I think it's been okay. Well, maybe for you, you demon-licking arsehole. <laughs> I have not been licking demon arseholes. Uh, come on, Bex. There's... No, I called you a demon-licking arsehole. You're an uh, arsehole that licks demons. I thought I w- I'm an arsehole that licks demons. I thought you was accusing me of licking a demon's arsehole. You was probably right. Um... No, no. <laughs> Bex, there's got to be something uh, you think is better about this world. Better than the olden times in pre-Zompok. Post-Zompok has to be better than pre-Zompok. Surely there's one thing. I mean, I suppose there aren't as many chavs. I think they were probably all high when the Zompok hit, so they must have gotten eaten pretty quickly, I reckon. Mm. I have to say, one of my favourite things about the Zompok is that it's not frowned upon for me to give zero fucks anymore. Okay, I have two questions. (laughs) <laughs> right okay. number number one okay in, in, like not the whole world knows what a chav, chav is so we have a listenership that's spread throughout the whole of the, the world there's only you know a dozen people living in it but some of them may come from like wows and some of them may come from France we, not everybody knows what a chav is can we have a, a, what, what's a chav for those people who don't know so a chav is a, a person, a, a, a male or a female, yes. who likes to wear tracksuits and mm-hmm. they like to smoke weed and they like to break into people's houses mm-hmm. and they like to live off benefits mm-hmm. and they like to um, just generally talk like this all the time, innit? <laughs> <laughs> that is very good. That is very good. Okay. Um, the second thing is I don't understand the the other part of what you said. Um, I don't get it. What do you mean? What do you mean? I, 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 explain it to a dumbass. Well, you know, before the zombie apocalypse, even though you kind of gave zero fucks, you had to kind of show that you perhaps gave a, a little fuck, like a minute fuck, a fuck that even if you could only see it with a microscope, was still a fuck. Mm, and, and and your point? What what's your point? Well, now I can give zero fucks. What's your problem? I told the same to that jumped up little cunt that dared to drop his rancid putrid skin all over my nice clean doorstep last week. Hold on. I've got to stop you again, Bex. I'm sorry about this. I, I know you have a point you want to say something. But who cleans their doorstep in a zombie apocalypse? I do. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Uh, that's n- it's nice to keep a clean house. To be fair, that's, that's not really important. Who are we talking about? What? Ju- what? What? What jumped up little cunt on the doorstep? I'm sorry, I forgot. You know, that cunt that thinks he's so clever just because he's undead and he can talk. I tell you now, he ain't got no vocab skills on me, the dumb wanker. (laughs) Oh, you mean the zombie you pissed off? What what was that again? I can't remember. I know you pissed him off, but what was the the reasoning behind the pissing off? I can't even remember the full story, but was his name Derek or something? And he wrote in because he got bit. Mm-hmm. And he he wrote in as he was get as he was turning, and I wasn't very yeah. nice to him. And yeah. he got his you know I hurt his feels a little bit. He was being a bit oh. of a special, special little snowflake. Oh bless him! So what happened? Well, he turned up with a few more cronies this time. Do you remember a couple of months ago he turned up with about twelve? Yeah, twelve of them. I remember that. Got yeah. Dispatched them pretty quickly. All mm-hmm. went all went quite well. Yeah. I was actually out doing a supply run, so Simon answered the door. And apparently, there's about thirty of them out there now. Right. So he said, he only had beef with me, not Simon, so he wasn't going to come in and fuck Simon up, but right. they'd come back for me. So I came home to bits of puss and slough on my doorstep, Luke and having an epic tantrum because Simon wouldn't let him go out and touch one of the gooey men. Oh. So, you know, I was doubly pissed off. One of the gooey men, that's a nice name. We should start calling them gooey men. Um, uh, To me, gooey, gooey, oh, it's kind of cute, isn't it? Oh, one of them lovely little gooey men. Oh. Gooey men. And yeah, it kind of sounds um, like you're in trouble a little bit. A little bit of trouble, Bex. Maybe a little bit. Nah. <laughs> like I said, mate, zero fucks. All mouth and no balls that lot. Probably got more balls in their mouth than you. <laughs> Thanks, Bex. <laughs> no problem, mate. So uh, who are we interviewing this week? I presume we've got an interview. Uh, yep, yeah, this week. Uh, we're incredibly... Excited! I'm going to put my English voice on for this. Hang on. I know I'm English. Ew. I'm going to become more English. Um, 
Yup, this week we are incredibly excited to have one of the main cast from the brilliant series Z Nation. Z Nation to you guys overseas. Um, so yeah, we got that guy. We got, um, what's his name? Doc uh, from Z Nation. Uh, Russell Hodgkinson. He's a great guy. He's like a massive epic hero of mine because he's like super cool and the zombie apocalypse and stuff. So yeah. And another fucking Hollywood star. Exciting times. We're a famous little podcast now. We're famous. We're a we're famous little podcast. Famous little fucking podcast, doesn't it, mate? Hey, stand back. We've got fucking famous, famous little people. fucking podcast. Stand back, Bex. Stand fucking back. We've got famous people coming on a fucking podcast. Anyway. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> oh, my God. I think you'll find the correct expression is. Oh, my God. There's famous people coming oh on a podcast. Oh, my God. Fucking- there's fucking famous people coming on the podcast. There you go. You, you can... No, I can't do it. You can't do it. Yeah, you're getting better. Uh, hi, Russell. Thanks so much for joining us today. I mean, I mean, we know how busy you are filming and everything. But our first question to all of our guests is, how are you surviving in the zombie apocalypse? <laughs> well, you know, it ain't easy, let me tell you. But, uh, you know, I got my essentials, um, you know, sunscreen, um, uh, 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 dental floss, <laughs> HP, um, you know, just your basics. Some good can of baked beans. <laughs> you know, you got to look after your teeth in the zombie apocalypse because there's no dentists yeah. around anymore. You got to do it. You got to take care of your skin and, uh, and your teeth. The sunscreen's yeah. crucial. Yeah. Russell, thank you so much for coming on to our podcast. We really appreciate it. Um, yeah, fun, fun, all, fun. All of our listeners, um, I, and myself, know you best uh, from playing Doc um, in sci-fi channels. Uh, we, we call it um, Z Nation here. You guys call it Z Nation. Um, we call right. it Z Nation because we have silly British accents. Um, but how, how did you get the role of Doc? How did you land that role? Well, you know, I just auditioned with everybody else. Um, You know, the casting people send out breakdowns to all the agencies. The agencies go through their roster, pick actors that they think might, you know, be suitable for auditioning for particular roles. And so I just auditioned with everybody and didn't hear it, didn't hear, didn't think I got called back. You know, I was kind of depressed. I thought, well, I thought I did good. And then I got, um, then I got a call saying they wanted to, to put me on tape again. So I put myself on tape and, um, so yeah, I'm actually uh, I have the distinction of being the only cast member that everybody said yes to. The directors, the producers, the network, everybody said yes to. It wasn't like me against somebody else, and they weren't sure. And yeah, you know, what I mean? so that's kind of cool. I mean, I, I I speak for myself here. I can't speak to every, for everybody, but I think you know the the role of Doc has almost become synonymous with the show. So maybe they had that in mind when they chose you. You know that you, we need this iconic character. I don't know. I, I don't really think they had that in mind initially. Um, I just think it turned out turned out that way, um, based on just you know our input and you know kind of when they get to kind of know who you are as an actor. Um, like I don't think they really knew that I was comedic initially. Yeah. But then when when they realized that I was comedic, then they started writing more comedy lines for me, and it just kind of turned into this thing, you know. So. Yeah, I don't think there were that was really part of the plan initially. Yeah. Um, so the series it's set a few years into the zombie apocalypse with hope for a cure on the horizon, um, but it's yeah. at the cost of experimenting on unwilling subjects. Morally, yeah. how would you feel if this was actually the case in real life? Well, in the in the situation that we're in, you know, they use Murphy, which um, I would have preferred they use somebody maybe on death row, some real creep who maybe some mass killer or some mm-hmm. child molester. Then, it, then I think that would be cool, you know. But I mean, Murphy only had a little what postal fraud, I think. Yeah. So yeah. that wasn't that wasn't very cool that they that they picked him. But you know, morally speaking, it's a bit of a bit of a bit of a sentence, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. So, yeah, I'm. I wasn't opposed to it. <laughs> I just. Um, I suppose I, if you if you're kind of desperate for a cure, you're going to try anything, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. You're desperate for a cure, so at least pick somebody that's you know a creep. Yeah, and Mur- yeah. Murphy's a creep, but he's not that bad, really. No. <laughs> I kind of love him, actually. He, he, he becomes a lovable creep, doesn't he? I mean, he, he, yeah, yeah, he really creep. is. He's the yeah, he's a lovable creep. Yeah, not really a creep, just kind of a snarky, 
pain in the ass. Well, you start off, you think, you know, this guy Murphy is going to be a real bad dude, you know? And then as the show progresses, as you get into the series, you kind of like, oh, okay. Like an unsung hero. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. He's real fun to play with, too, you know? I love I love when we have scenes together, because mm. I think that's a really nice contrast between his kind of snarky humor and my kind of laid back, oh, hippie kind of style. Yeah. It's a nice contrast. I really like playing with him. I mean, um, Doc is one of those, like, you know, um, liberal kind of characters who who has a liberal attitude to taking drugs and stuff like that. Uh, right. Do, I mean, how do you how do you feel about, the, you know, the, that using drugs and using um, that type of thing to cope in the stress of a zombie apocalypse? Do you think that would happen? You know, just whatever gets you through the day, man. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> Even if it ends up... No judgment. <laughs> yeah. no judgment here, man. Just whatever it takes, whether it's a good cup of tea or a quaalude, you know, <laughs> whatever gets you through it. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm currently enjoying a nice glass of white wine. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's usual for Vex. Uh, yeah. Zombie apocalypse notwithstanding. Uh, <laughs> Let me elaborate a tiny bit on that. Um, you know, when I found out I, I was going to be kind of the pothead on the show, mm -hmm. I thought, well, can, let's try to have some fun with this. And so I, mm. um, I pitched the idea that we we grow some marijuana using dead zombies as compost and call oh. it z <laughs> and, um, oh, You know, we really, I really think that the, you know, the z -weed, I think of it as medicinal, you know, yeah. for pain relief. So it's not just, you know, Doc is just getting stoned just to get stoned. He's 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 in pain, you know. He, he needs a distraction from the, you know, the misery of day to day life in the apocalypse. So. Uh, I started to get more and more interested in uh, medical marijuana and, and all the different things that it's good for. Yeah. And luckily, we um, we shoot in a, um, uh, a legalized state, uh, Washington State, where we film the, shoot, uh, the show is a yeah. legalized marijuana state. So there's lots of, you know, advocacy there for, for marijuana. Mm. Amazing. You said that um, you, you put the idea about the, the zombie compost. And they kind yeah. of took it up. How much do you guys have? Do you have much of a say in like the construction of your own characters and your influence in the show? Yeah, I think we I think we do. Um, we get invited to the writers group and they ask us, you know, you know, what are our thoughts for the season? And, you know, you know, what, you know, where do you see your character going? And and so I think we have a, a, a big um, uh, influence on that. I mean, I don't think Doc Doc really didn't start out to be this hippie dude. Mm. He really was supposed to be this high end drug dealer. Yeah. But, okay. um, the thing that the thing that's interesting about doing television, I'm, I have a theater background. So I'm really just, you know, I'm mostly a theater actor, so I haven't done a lot of television. Mm -hmm. But um, Carl, Carl oh. Schaefer, our, our showrunner, had told us that anytime you cast a television series, you, um, whoever you cast in those roles, no matter what you think the role is going to be, it ends up kind of evolving into like who the person really is, sort of. Mm in a way yeah. the essence of that person can't help but kind of come through yeah so um it's kind of interesting i just stopped cutting my hair you'll notice in season one my hair was pretty short yeah. my beard was pretty short and i just figured you know what i'm just gonna it's the apocalypse when am i gonna go to that barber shop you know so i just let everything go yeah and um just let the beard go and let the hair kind of get longer and started dressing a certain way and um it just kind of morphed into this this dude. I mean, once I knew I had the the weed scene, you know, that marijuana scene, yeah. I just started thinking of him more as a hippie and yeah. started playing him more that way. I would throw in like a man or hey dude or what up what's up man. Yeah. It wasn't even in the script, but I would just kind of start doing it that way, you know? Yeah. And yeah. and then it just kind of uh, morphed into this whole thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and that kind of makes it a bit more personal actually. That's that's quite good. Yeah. I enjoy that you're able to play around with characters that kind of, to kind of makes them feel a bit, a bit more um, alive and not just somebody playing a, a character. Yeah, a more authentic. It's yeah, almost like a more natural person. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, we, we, we spoke to a, you know quite a lot of our listenership uh, before you was coming on to our show. And mm. um, a, a lot of people are split about 
uh, Z Nation. There, there's, you know, there, there's a lot of people who love it, um, and there's lots of people who gave up on it in the early days, and you know, and um, didn't move along with the show. I mean, one of the things I like about the show is it, it's it's not stayed. It doesn't, you know, it moves along. Um, there's uh, you play with the tropes and the ideas of the zombie apocalypse, and you play with them. You play silly games with them, and you twist them on their head. Um, do you think sometimes uh, people? don't realize um that you're it's not to be taken too seriously and kind of look at it a bit walking deadish as if it's supposed to be melodramatic well i get that you know walking dead fans are fierce fiercely mm. loyal and um and you know there's you know to, to start watching another zombie show they, they might feel a little disloyal to walking dead you know sure. but we're just trying to have a little more fun with the genre yeah um try not to take it all too seriously and really just put the fun back in the apocalypse. I mean, you know, just because it's the apocalypse doesn't mean it's all gloom and doom. Oh, absolutely I, not. You know, well, I, I love, yeah, I love our lighthearted moments and um, just not taking it all too seriously and finding your group um, and being loyal and, and loving each other and caring about each other. And um, uh, I think it's just a, a really great show if you're into that genre. And I think you should give it a try. I think if you can at least get to the fourth episode, mm. when I'm stuck in the, when Doc is stuck in the air shaft and he gets stoned with the zombie. Yep. <laughs> and then there's that great, there's that great moment after, you know, um, well, I don't want to spoil it for anybody who hadn't seen it, but um, it's, it's kind of the first time that the, the team really comes together and has a real human moment. Mm. And I think it, by, by the fourth episode, I think you're kind of hooked if you're I, into it at all. I agree. I mean, when you talk to people who do love the show, that is the first episode they mention to you. I mean, they mention some of the epic zombie kills and obviously the the, oh, yeah. the, the zombie nado. Um, but that that episode there is like, oh, you've got to talk to Doc about that episode. He, that's the one for me. <laughs> that's the one that turned me on to the show. You know, that was one. actually um, that was actually my audition monologue. Oh, was and, it? Yeah, and it's wow. really a beautiful, beautifully written piece because it's. It's funny, but it's also really, you know, emotional and full of regret. And, you know, um, you know, he's like he thinks he's going to die, you know, yeah. so that, he's got his yeah. last joint. He was saving it mm. for when they got to California and he's going to just fire it up because he knows he's going out, you know. Mm. And then he decides to, you know, see if the zombie wants some of it, you know, or I forget how that happened. Exactly. I think he started blowing smoke rings in his face. Or he something. Blew it in his face and then too. he. Yeah, and then he realized that the zombie was kind of getting a little high and starting to mimic him. And yeah. it was a pretty cool, it was a really awesome scene, mm. well written, and uh, I love playing it. It's incredible, yeah. Awesome. So, speaking of The Walking Dead, if The Walking yeah. Dead cast and the cast of Zed Nation were in a fight, who would win and why? Well, you know, if you're talking about the actors that are, if it was at their actors versus our actors, mm. they would probably kick our ass because. <laughs> <laughs> they get they get paid so much more than we do. Yeah. So they get paid so much more than we do that they can probably afford personal trainers yeah, yeah. and all kind of good nutrition. Yeah. So they kick our ass. But if we're talking about characters versus characters, we would kick their ass. Yeah. Because let's face it, we got 10k who could yep. kill a zombie at 50 paces with a paper clip and a rubber band. <laughs> we got, you know, we got Addie and her fierce Z whacker. Mm. We got Warren and her machete. We got, I mean, come on. We got giant cheese wheels and yep. seaweed and a zombie messiah. So, <laughs> you know, come on. Yeah, you uh, guys are much more inventive, I think. Mm. None of this screwdriver through the temple crap. You go all out. Yeah, we really do. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, 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 the one of the things you got to love about the the... Uh, the Z Nation is the diversity of the characters. Like you said, you just listed them all there, and you're just like, you know, the, the 10K and the, uh, Addy, and you just kind of like they're they're all so different and unusual, and they all have their own methods of killing people without making it too much like a cartoon. You know, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, and it's it feels like family. I mean, now we're in our fourth season, and it really feels like family. Um, I've tried to watch The Walking Dead, and um, mm. it just seems like there's so many characters. I can't really get a. I can't really. I don't know. I just feel like there's too many. Yeah. So mm. I can't, you know, I don't know. My wife loves it. She's a huge Walking Dead fan. Yep. She probably liked it even more than our show, but she's one of those really fierce Walking Dead fans. You yep. know, I get it. 
There's, there's yeah. plenty of them about, Russell. And you know there what? is. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I get it. I watch it. I, I, you know, anything that's got zombies yeah. in it, I'll watch it. Um, I don't care. Same. And you know, Same. I get to, I, I get to meet those guys at these comic cons that yep. I do, and they're all so great. They're yep. just a really great group of, of, of folks. So it's really nice to kind of be in, you know, in the same genre with them and get to run into yeah. them here and there. Yeah. yeah, it's good fun. Um, I mean, I, I, I had a question. One of, one of my, uh, one of the people in our group who helped run our podcast. Um, she's a, she's a lovely lady called Diane, and she asked me to ask you, do you take any of um, Doc's style tips? Do you take any of his wardrobe home? Um, <laughs> so, uh, do you dress and, and act like Doc outside of the workplace? Well, you know, I have to sport this long hair and this long beard, yeah. uh, you know, through the year. And um, so if I don't kind of artsy fartsy it up a little, I just look homeless. <laughs> so, <laughs> so try to wear my little beret and my little round glasses and I wear, you know, suspenders and yeah. little vests. And, you know, I try to, I try to, you know, I call it hobo chic. Yeah. That's kind of I really I'm like your for. IMDB picture. Oh, thank you. You're right. IMD pic- D picture's really cool with you in the suit. That's oh, yeah, hobo chic, that, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's cool. So yeah, I try. I, I don't. I don't uh, do the man bun. I think the man bun is over. Yeah. I think it was popular mm-hmm. for about fifteen minutes. Yes. Um, yeah, it never was popular see, in my opinion. I don't know if you noticed uh, in the episode with Doc's Angels, uh, where the girls give me a makeover and they put my hair in a man bun. Yes, I remember. <laughs> Yeah. Did you see how fat? Did you see how fast I pulled that rubber band? <laughs> Pretty quick. I was like, Doc, no. Doc is not cool with the man bun. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing cool about a man bun. He's too man for a I man just bun. don't think so. I mean, yeah, I just got rid of it quick. <laughs> So we've got a couple of other questions from uh, from yep. our listeners because we, we do have a lot of big fans uh, of the show that, that kind of follow our podcast and they, they were really excited when they, they heard you were going to come on. So uh, we've got a guy called Mark Nye in our group and he asked what your favourite zombie kill is on the series as in death to the zombie, not death from a zombie. Right. Oh, gosh, there's been so many great ones. Oh, yeah. um, I really love the egg beater to the face. Yes. Ooh. Um, Addie's, oh, yeah. I think Addie did that one. Yeah. I also loved when 10K shoved that fire extinguisher into the zombie and he kind of blew up. He, yeah. got, he, he, he swelled up and it, he blew up and got like white cream all over us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, amazing. There I got the so mother much... load of yeah. that episode. Um, so those were, I think, two of my favorite kind of funny ones. And um, oh. I also love the, the zombie in the wheel well. You yeah. have to pull over. I'm like, well, that explains the pull to the left. And we, we look, you know, it's funny because I didn't know. That was like, I think, the first day of shooting. And I thought they were just going to stick a, you know, a dummy, some dummy up under the wheel well. But they really got this skinny girl, really, really skinny uh, zombie extra to get up under there. Oh, wow. And she was a real person quivering and drooling. And oh, no. I, I was like, damn, these people are serious. Does, does, that, <laughs> does that freak you out a bit, Russell? When you, when you oh, see totally, these people, yeah? Honestly, it totally freaked me out because yeah. I really thought it was going to be a dummy. We got out and looked at it, and I was like, oh, my God. They pulled that, the tire away, and she was there. Yeah, she wow. was already there. It was crazy. <laughs> Incredible. Um, wait, yeah. another, another one of our listeners asked, uh, her name's Claire May, said, uh, "What wants to know what your favorite weapon has been out of all of the seasons. So which is your favorite weapon? Uh, and that's Claire that asks that? Claire May, yeah. Claire May. Well, thank you for that question, Claire May. I tell you, I really loved the um, the garden weasel that Doc got to use, but I didn't get to really play with it as much as I wanted to. I'm trying to resurrect it. Yeah. It was in the Fido. It was when we went to the, I don't know, where we, where the Z-weed was being hap- what was yep. happening and there were the Fido zombies and Doc grabbed the weed, the garden weasel. But I think they, they thought I was going to hurt somebody because we... <laughs> Usually, usually all the weapons are, we have a rubber one and then we have the real one, mm-hmm. but they didn't really have a rubber one made for that. So no. I was uh, kind of swinging that thing around and they were afraid I was going to yeah. injure somebody. So, yeah. but I, I like the garden weasel. <laughs> yeah, take it off, yes. If, if we're just talking about my weapons, you know, mm-hmm. and I also love the crowbar. I think the crowbar is the most practical weapon. Yeah. Uh, just because you can always find one, you know, I mean, if you got guns, yeah. you're going to run out of bullets eventually. Mm-hmm. I don't know how we keep finding wet ammo no. but you know a, a crowbar you're always going to be able to find one in any abandoned car so i think it's the most practical yeah and i I, I, I also don't like doc with a gun I, I just want doc to be the i mean i think doc probably never owned a gun he was 
he was an old hippie from the 60s. He's a total peace, love, groovy guy, man. He's yeah. not going to have a gun. So uh, uh, anytime, uh, anytime I do have a gun, I try to be kind of clumsy with it or yeah. it jams or I can't do it right. or. <laughs> I, I kind of see uh, Doc, if it wasn't for uh, the zombie apocalypse, to kind of be a bit of a pacifist, you know? I imagine he, oh, would, totally. he would be in the middle of the argument, you know, spreading peace and love rather than, you know. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I agree. Okay. Pass the bong and pass the bong, and we'll talk about it. You know. Yeah, great. <laughs> um, right, Russell. Um, thank you so much for being on our little podcast. We're really incredibly grateful to you taking the time to organise this and to come along. I know you're a really busy guy, and you're you're shooting again at the moment. So, um, well, I'm actually I'm I'm actually home for the weekend. Yeah. You know, I live in I live in Seattle, Washington, which is only four hours away from Spokane, where we. Uh, where we shoot the show. So lucky me, I get to come home uh, on the weekends. So oh, that's not too bad. That should be at a, a really good time. Oh, wow. It's great. Oh, I'm sorry we've interrupted your weekend off though. <laughs> no, no, not at all. My wife is actually out of town. Mm. And so I'm just here with my cats. Oh, wonderful. Uh, <laughs> Russell, make, so, make so, we like soup. cats. Russell, for the, oh, rest, I love cats. for the rest of the cast um, who, who, do, yeah. who are not as lucky to live so close, do they stay right. there? Do they stay on set? Yeah. They do. Yeah, they pretty much stay in Spokane. I mean, yeah. once in a while, they'll, they'll have to fly home for, for one reason or the other. But um, typically, we all just live there in Spokane. Oh, wow. Or we call it, Sp- we call it Spokangelis. Spokangelis, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you know, it's a bit like Hogwarts or something, isn't it? You all just go off and have your adventures and then go home in the summer holidays. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Kind of, that's cool. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you so much, Russell. I really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you, Thank you for speaking to us. Uh, take My care. pleasure. Thank you, guys. Take, take care, Russell. Speak to you again soon. All right. Stay soon. Tuned Bye. For Bye. Stay tuned for season four. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's going to be awesome. We've I've already read the first four episodes. I'm okay. Like, okay. Right. Before you oh, go, yeah. then, if you've read, we can't it. wait. If you've read the first Thanks, four episodes, um, we need we need one spoiler before you go. Oh. Oh. Okay. Uh, Oh, something well, you're allowed to tell us. <laughs> something I'm allowed to tell you. Uh, we have a new mission. Oh, a new mission. Okay, that's good. The, 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 the team the team gets back together and we have a new mission. Right. Uh, some are going to be back. We may have some new members, but uh, it's it's the team coming back together with a new mission. There wow. you go. I can't, I can't wait. Fantastic. Thank you, Russell. And you heard okay, it here guys. first. <laughs> take, right, care. take care. Bye. Bye. Uh, bye. bye. Another great interview. Interview. Yeah, it really was. Yeah, interview. Was interview. Yeah. It really was, but you, you sound a little bit off tonight. I mean, have, have cognitive zombies shown up on your depth doorstep too? No, not really. I've just, you know, I feel a bit, feel a bit delirious. I haven't really been sleeping much, you know. Oh, have you not been sleeping on your king size bed that's got diamonds for <laughs> drapes? And people wafting you and feeding you grapes. Oh, I don't have wafters. <laughs> Why have you not been sleeping? <laughs> well, it, it's been... <laughs> oh, I don't like it when you talk to me like that. Um, a couple of things. <laughs> it's kind of creepy. <laughs> um, couple, uh, there's, there's a couple of things. Um, one, the the demons. You know the fucking demons. I mean, I, I you know, the de- me and the demons. The fucking the demons. The fucking demons. They're, they're, they're keeping me up all fucking hours, you know, rehearsing that play, the grease thing. Like, you're, the, you're the one I don't want. You are the one I want. <laughs> you're the one I don't want. You are the one I want. <laughs> that all fucking night. Oh, well, oh, well, oh, well, oh. Ooh. I forgot it's about that. Night. How are they getting on? How are they getting on? I, can't, I actually really want to see it. Oh. I'm going to come down. It's going to like a I mean, West it's End It's demons. demons doing grease. How, how, honestly, how do you think it's going? Alright, Mr. Snappy, what else has got your thumb in a twist? I heard a rumour, and this is just a rumour, I heard it through the grapevine, Um, I'm not going to sing this song, I heard a rumour about a band, a band? They're not a band, they're a group, you know, if there's a band, they'd be playing fucking music and shit, no, they're not a band, they're a group. Playing the Glockenspiel. The Glockenspiel, (laughs) no, a group of hunters. I love the Glockenspiel. Who doesn't love the Glockenspiel? Uh, I love the word, um... I, if I have a child, another child, I'm going to call him or her Glockenspiel, so I can call across the, the apocalypse Glockenspiel, and you'd be hi, father. <laughs> oh, that would be good. Anyway, there's a group of hunters. Do we live in Bavaria? Yeah, why not? Why group not? of hunters. 
And there's a group of hunters. Hunters. Um, people hunting. Um, not like posh people on horses catching foxes because they're bored. This is like, uh, like hardcore people out hunting with tridents and shit. Um, anyway, this is what I've heard. Tridents. Tridents. They've got tridents, and I've heard that they, when the vinning happened, they saw the demons mm-hmm. emerge, and um, for some reason, this group of I don't know what they are, fucking hard nut case people, and with tridents and shit, they 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 decided that they they want to. Um, they want to kill the demons. They want to kill the demons because of the zombies. So they think that the zombies and the demons are like, you know, connected. Which they are connected, but they they think it's the demons' fault. Um, so they want to come kill them. And like, yeah, it's a bit scary. But it is the de- it is the demons' fault. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But I'm kind of fond of Alan uh, and the gang. Uh, I don't I don't really want them to get hurt if possible. Oh, you've just really become accustomed to your. Uh, demon facials, haven't you? Mm, yeah, no. And that makes you sad if you don't have your demon facial anymore. I'm saying yeah, no. Um, it's it's a rumor though. Um, so you know, it could be just like a group of ten year old chavs thinking they're hard. You know, like all right, geezer, I'm gonna kill you, fucking demon geezer, like that. It's just like it could be a group of kids with Burberry jackets on and their hats turned the wrong way. Um, so yeah. Well, I mean, you could always point them in the way of those cognitive zombies. That saves me a job then. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, you know, I. To be fair, I thought you was looking forward to a bit of beef with Derek. Um, you like you was gonna take him on. He was like, oh, I'm Vex, I'm well off, I don't kick ass and all that stuff. And you was gonna take him on. Nah, mate, it's too hot. Can't be us using the energy. <laughs> I don't eat much well nowadays. You know, it's fucking tin spam. Yeah, right. Well, okay. Well, that, I think um, are we? It's too hot. Is isn't the apocalypse hot this week? The apocalypse is so hot this week and sticky. And sticky. And when you've not got a working shower. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad times. The smell it's around bad. here is chronic. We've got kids, we've got dogs, we've got no shower, we've got rotting, putrid bodies laying around the garden. It stinks Ooh. worse than a crack horse. Prostitutes fanny. Yes. One of those. And it's hot, man. And we say, <laughs> it's so hot. So we have a theory that possibly it's so hot because of the zombie gases, the gases from the decomposing bodies. Yeah. It's creating a layer like the ozone and heating up the earth at a higher rate. Um, plus, we don't have um, all of those other gases escaping from the planes and shit to keep the earth cool. Isn't that like what it's supposed to do? It creates like the clouds yeah. and then it keeps the earth cool. So we haven't got that. So I think like the, the environment's going to just like, yeah, it's going crazy. Or it could just be, you know. So basically, if we're all not killed by zombies, we're just going to boil to death. Yeah, I mean, or it could just be the summer. So it could be that. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That. Right, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for coming to another... Oh, we've got news, Beck. So I haven't been spreading the news. Would you like to hear the news? Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> Oh, we need to do GMZ the musical again because we did such a lousy job of it last time. We should just come out here and just. Oh, if we don't talk about GMZ the musical. No, but we should do it. We should do a proper one where we just come out and we do we do singing and we do dancing and maybe some high kicks. But when it's cooler, because it's too hot, we need it when it's cooler. Oh yeah, it's too hot for high kicks. Um. Cool. Anyway, I have news, so I'm going to spread the news now. I start spreading the news. Um. So news. Um. We have a book coming out. Um, we have uh, GMZ okay. are bringing out a book. Um, so we're really lucky. So we're, we're a lucky little podcast in that we have lots of friends. Friends of the podcast. Hello, little friends. And they come round to our GMZ house and we have little friendly parties. Um, and at one of these little friendly parties with other people... Um, there, there's a bunch of authors that we've interviewed in the past and a bunch of authors that we know who, who write about zombies and stuff. Um, and we said to people, look, let's all get together, man. Let's do something good. Let's do something good with our time and our efforts. Um, and we decided to write a book. And what we're doing is a book for charity, aren't we, Bex? We are. And it's, it's not a book with just one story. It's a book with multiple stories multiple that, multiple that's the best kind of book it's gonna, it's gonna have tons of authors because who doesn't like multiple things yeah we like we like we like lots often many hard fast are we still talking about books <laughs> I've lost my chance now <laughs> 
Um, anyway, so this uh, book is going to be an anthology, and it's going to have loads of zombie stories in it. Um, I'm going to write one. Um, I don't know. If, uh, Bex, are you going to write one? Are you going to have one in there? I'm, I'm hoping to write one. I have an idea, but I'm not very good at the writing. Right, okay, so we might have Bex. I'm one. good at the talking, but not at the writing. I'm good at the talking, not at the writing. Um, I'm not good at either. Yes. Um, but I, I, you know, I'm going to get people to help me. I'm going to get you know people to help me, bring me up to their level, raise me up, put me on their shoulders and raise me up to a higher level. And um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stand on the shoulders of greatness and see what I can achieve. Um, and we're going to get all these other writers all right. together, all these wonderful people. Um, some incre- I don't want to name too many because um, obviously they still need to send in their stories and then you still need to write them um, but there's going to be tons of mm. authors loads of people we've interviewed in the past um, and there's going to have about 20 30 authors in there so it's going to be so many big stories so many big authors and the best part about the whole thing is going to be for charity so the charity it's going to be is for uh, breast cancer care um, which is a UK based charity and they do so much for the for helping women um, get through breast cancer and to help rehabilitate their lives and stuff like that so they do incredible work um, and we'll talk about it more when we get closer to the time um, but that's coming up soon and that'll be amazing I'm well looking forward to it I can't wait for it to come out it's going to be incredible and people can't wait for it to come together it's all going to come together at the last minute so anyway thank you everybody for coming to our little apocalyptic show if you came just to listen to Doc from Z Nation you should check out uh, like the rest of the thing um, we actually you know we do this all the time we do we do these podcasts um, and, and we think we're finished and then we're not because I just keep talking so that happens. Anyway, thank you for coming. Hmm. Right, fair enough. Um, let's... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, till next time, remember to stay safe. And remember to kick ass. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Can't kick ass in this fucking weather. Bye. <laughs> December 21st, 2012. The zombie infestation sweeps across the globe. Nearly the entire human race is destroyed by the onslaught of undead, leaving a dwindling population to suffer in the wake of chaos and horror that is the apocalypse. Only two men can save all of humanity. Action. Romance. Don't kiss me. Not, 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 not. Puppet time. Is anyone there? A weekly podcast from the undead filled wasteland that they call home. Keep updating, keep going. Get away, get away. Ah! Oh my eye! Ah! Uh, being a little dramatic here. Tune in to the Is Anyone There podcast. It may save your life.